Would you like that? This is what happens to our pre-born neighbors every day. I know. And most people act like it's no big deal. Well, it is, but what do we? What's the response of Wheaton College to it? Because mm -hmm. there's an abortion mill just down the road in Roosevelt, and I can tell you most of Wheaton College is not out there because I've been out there in order to be found. And I mean, some of the students that we've talked to, they don't even know that it's down there. That there's an abortion mill nearby. Mm -hmm. That's a problem. That's part of why we're out here. Yeah. Because we need to, we need to know that there's a death camp nearby, like and we need to go out there to rescue our neighbors. Because it. Because Jesus said to love your neighbor as yourself. It's all about loving. And we're not doing that. We're hating our neighbors to death, our preborn neighbors. And most Christians, we're living in a Holocaust. Most Christians act like it's no big deal. They go about their business. They're at peace with child sacrifice. They're at peace with that. And it has to stop. So we're here to awaken up fellow believers to this, to this, this Holocaust. Just like we've been wake, just like we have been awoken, when we're trying to wake up others. Yeah. So what's a practical application? To well, you mean like what can you do? Well, one thing is, um, the An the Anchor Health Center. That's what it's called. It's an abortion mill. I'm thinking about four or five miles away down on Roosevelt, mm -hmm. 1186 Roosevelt. Yeah. Unless you have an eight o'clock class tomorrow, or even nine o'clock, um, I'd, I'd say come out there tomorrow morning and Saturday. That'd be, that's what I started doing 10 years ago. I started coming out to the abortion mills. And so that's one thing, come out there. What would we be doing there though? Well, when I go out there, I, I mean, not everyone has signs. I put out signs on the, on the poles. I have literature to, to give to those coming in. I warn them before they go in. I, you know, I say, don't murder your child and, and other things. And just being a the presence there, just, just like standing there. There will, there will be mothers who change their minds if you're out there pleading with them, a few anyway, and and talk talk about it here on the college campus because I can assure you, from what I've heard from Matthew and from my own experience, not many here are talking about it, not on a regular basis. Yeah. So I mean, like ask your ask your teachers, why don't you talk about this? You know, this this is a Holocaust and yet you're ignoring it. Ask ask your friends, why does no one talk about this? I mean, have any of your friends or teachers talked about this at all? I feel like it's a semi-regular thing. Like, it is? It's a very, like, I mean, obviously, like, in our country, it's very politically charged, but I think, I think we're pretty much mostly on the same page when it comes to abortion. We, we have had discussions and stuff about it before, and it's very much, like, it's murder. Like, there's Yeah, but our people are living their lives like kids are being murdered all around them. Are people acting with urgency to save children from murder? I can tell you the question, you know, simply believing that abortion is murder is not going to save people from murder. Yeah. Like, like at least, well, it's not going to save, like, the children who are scheduled for death this week, like, because their pagan parents hate them. You know? And it goes back to love. Oh, we need to love our preborn neighbors, and we're not doing that. And their mothers, I think that's really key too. What's that? Loving their mothers too. Well, really, what we've done in 40, 46 years is we put so much love to, we give them so much love to the mothers that we completely have forsaken that the, the preborn. To the like, we need to love them both, at, you know, the same, and and we can't be afraid to. To, I mean, because they're not always, but most often they're there out of their own sexual sin, and we cannot ignore that. And because doing that is not loving to them, but we need to love our preborn neighbors much more. And when, when we're absent from the actual abortion mill, that's not loving them. That's abandoning them, abandoning them to death. And I mean, there should be how many students come to the school? A thousand, two thousand, three thousand. 2,500? There should be a third of that at the abortion mills throughout the week. I wonder. I mean, having an urgency, or even 10% of that could be at the abortion mills. 10% of the faculty could make time to come out, but they're not doing it. Um, I would, honestly, if you guys want to get women students involved, it's a very culture. Um, go to the OCO. OCO, um, yeah. What's Office that? of Christian Outreach. It's in Laura Beamer. Um, 
and talk to the directors like, there. You're saying like make them feel um, shame or something? And they're the yeah, people that mobilize so all the like students um, to go. <coughs> like we, we're part of a group. We go down to Chicago every <laughs> night. Um, go fri- where? Go down to Chicago, yeah, so like downtown, the, yeah. um, every Friday night to yeah. share the gospel. Yeah. Make feel must make people hand out stuff. Yeah. There's yeah. groups of Wheaton students yeah. that um, yeah. go yeah. to yeah. prison yeah. ministries. Um, and visit places oh, around so the area. area. There's people that go to like college so. page and share the so. gospel. There. I think. And, like, I think. Maybe this um, so it's a. We didn't students are very ready to get involved in stuff. Um, it's just a matter of like equipping us to do that. Well, um, so I talked to them. And well, it's. I mean, it's a very like. That's a good way to get people involved. So. I don't know. I guess I don't agree. Yeah, I need, I need to ask. How long has that okay. existed? The OCO. We need to make it years, probably. Okay. Because I, I didn't know that existed. I thought it was best Matthew. Like what? Because um, he was a student here. So they can come um, to Christ and ask his forgiveness. Yeah, there, there should be a student here and or a teacher who, who talks to, to them we go out who's, going, who's going here and, we preach the and say, you know, nothing's been done about this. this. We need to and have I'm urgency about this. I, I mean, like, is there any student on campus who... Him, is, there, is there any student on campus who who, lo- who would do that? But I'm also making I mean, who would give time to, like, to take in students out there, like on Wednesdays and Saturdays? There are... Many students back and about it, so. sure Well, I, they need to be at the abortion house. Yeah. They, because we, the problem is, so many Christians make excuses um, why they can't go to the abortion mills, why they can't talk about it all the time, why they can't go out to the streets. Like right there, That's why this Holocaust continues. Like, it's because we do all these other ministries, which is good, so and we neglect the greatest, the, the most needy orphan in our culture, and neglecting them. We're acting like they're, they're not even there being, the being murdered. Consider, mm-hmm. And that needs to change. Doing this to their kid, and the and faculty, the teachers, they need, they need their projects are upside down. Do even though their first like all the stuff that we do, we need to do this in addition to that. On, this Otherwise, we're not living on James 127 to visit orphans in their affliction. Or we're leaving them to be murdered, to be butchered to death on the road. So I, I'd encourage you, maybe even go there yourself. And, and when I went to college with Bob Jones, nobody was doing it. Nobody was taking it. No one. There was no ministry out to the abortion mill, going out to the abortion mill. So I did it. So many step step up. Maybe that's you. We, we need we need at least you need at least one student or teacher to do that. Otherwise, it's probably not going to get done. Because I guarantee you, most people, this is not a priority to them. They may be, they may be pro-life or anti-abortion, yes, it's good to do, like, but they have no urgency. But so I'd, I'd encourage you to think about that, you know, maybe doing that yourself. Nicholas. You're Daniel? Daniel. Nice to meet you, Nicholas. You as well, Daniel. Consider what the Lord would have you to do about this. And... They don't don't just go everywhere. with the flow, the status quo. That They're putting the message says, it, yeah, I'm pro-life, so but as, it's as not as worth my time to rescue the these culture, children from I use these signs ending like up like this child. It's time to practice true and undefiled religion. Yeah. I have great and to help these orphans. And check out the websites on there. They actually made a couple on there. I can give you some ideas of what to do as well. Thank you, Daniel.